Okay, let's move on to 919238 Stantonsburg. As I said, this is a small CDO, very much like the fountain office that we were calling into from Farmville. Let me just pick up and dial my own number. Now here's something which went to the reorder tone. The way this office is built, there are a maximum of a thousand lines. Now some of these can be party lines, but whether it's a party line or not, each line has 10 numbers associated with it. For example, 238213X, all 10 numbers go to the same line. The last digit just selects what type of ring you get. And uh, everybody who's not on a party line has a phone number ending in 1 because the digit 1 selects the standard single ring on ring. On this call, I'll be selecting double ring. But listen for a mysterious tick after the sixth digit sounds almost as if it's doing the busy test on the sixth digit rather than the seventh. By the way, the reason it took such a long time to start ringing was because I happened to dial the last digit right in the middle of the ringing part of the ring cycle. Had the connector connected the ring power up at the moment I dialed the last digit, then the first ring wouldn't have been a double ring, and that would send the wrong signal. So the connector actually has to wait for the ringing machine to get around to the beginning of the ring cycle before it connects through, and that can result in having to wait a second or two or three seconds before ringing starts. Here's a call to a single ring, and again, you can hear that tick on the sixth digit. This call has a little bit of hum on it, and I apologize for that. I didn't have my head oriented in the right position. That's the problem with these telephone pickup coils that I use on these phones. Oh, they make terrific recordings, but you have to select your phone carefully. It has to be one that doesn't have too much hum in the area. Sometimes you can't get a hum-free phone, and in that case, you have to hold your head in the right position so that the pickup coil doesn't induce too much hum from the power lines nearby or the light in the phone or whatever. And in this call, uh, it wasn't until I l dialed the last digit that I got my head turned in the right position to reduce the hum. In this office, they don't have a callback circuit for party line people to call each other. They have a ringback circuit. The difference is that while the callback circuit actually creates an incoming call to whatever number you specify, all the ringback circuit does is hold you up and uh, put ring on. So you can't cause the ringback circuit to ring other people's phones the way you can with a callback. 
Here's what happened when I stumbled into it. I dialed nine and then two more digits. Then I hung up and instead of getting a new dial tone, I got the sound of a ring tripping. Now that we've crossed into the Wilson Toll Center area, our operators will be in Wilson, and since Wilson is a step tandem, I can assure you that when we dial zero, we will get a direct trunk to the operator. Now, Wilson has an NX1, but the NX1 is not the toll center. So, here's a call to zero, and you'll notice that we go right into the operator trunk. Yes, can you tell me what exchanges I can call locally from here? Wilson, where do you want to call to? Well, I'd like to know for future reference what they all are. I'm in 238 here. Wilson is the only place you can call local, sir. Wilson. Uh -huh. What's that, uh, 291, 237, and 24? Yes, sir. Okay, and that's it then? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. The codes in Wilson are 237 and 243 in the step, and 291 in the NX1 crossbar. And to call Wilson, you have to dial 8 before the seven-digit number because it's considered EAS, Extended Area Service. Also, to call things like 411, you have to dial a 7 first. So, you know, this is very Carolina Telephone. They do this a lot. But you got to have a local directory to know how to use the darn phone, you know. Well, do you dial the number? You dial 8 plus the number, then how do you call information? 7 plus 411? That's a really common pattern in this part of the state. So, did you, by the way, notice that funny ring that we heard dialing operator? That's the ring of the Wilson step. And uh, let's hear it again. We'll dial 8 to access the EAS trunk, and then we'll dial a ringing number in the Wilson step. Alrighty, now let's call the Wilson NX1. We'll dial 8 plus 291, and we'll uh, get a ringing number. By the way, when we call into these NX1s, you'll notice the classic NX1 pulsing. Nobody knows, at least nobody I know, knows what that pulsing does, but it's some sort of internal serial communication within the switch. Probably helps it route the call through its own internal network. Right before it starts to ring, you'll hear the pulsing. All right, now let's try 7611 for repair. Telephone repair service, may I have a number you're reporting? I'm sorry, I got you by mistake. Okay. Bye. When I dialed 7 plus another digit, I got this. What number did you dial? Uh, what number did I dial? Yes, 
So where are you calling from? Calling, I'm calling from uh, 238 office here. Are you, did you dial one before the, I'm sorry, did you dial eight before the number? Yes, I did. Well, try it again. It shows to be a good number. Okay, thank you. And now here's dialing 8 plus a vacant level, which will get us into the Wilson Step vacant level recording. And again, you get to hear the Wilson ring right before the recording starts. It would be nice to hear that Wilson step ring close up. Well, the next stop is Wilson, and so we'll hear that step ring right in the same building. Many thanks to Mark Scudder for putting together this remaster of the Stantonsburg program. <laughs> 